your teachers are making and reading your textbooks. The other day I talked to you about food is our fuel. I did about half the lesson and I just want to continue it for you today. But let us go back over what we learned the other day. Food can be divided into three groups. Energy giving food, body building food, and protective food. So food can be divided into three groups. Energy giving food, body building food, and protective foods. Let us remember that the food is called nutrients. What we find in the food is called nutrients. So in energy giving foods, it is carbohydrates and fats. Carbohydrates give us energy to do all of our daily activities. Fats help us to absorb the minerals and nutrients. They also give us energy. Body building foods are protein. They give us strong bones and muscles. Protective foods are the vitamins and minerals that we find in the fruits and vegetables. Okay. Also in food, we find water and fiber. When we talked about water the other day, I showed you the grape. When we dry it, it became a raisin. It was all shriveled up. Okay. So water is very important to our body. Just like water content is in the fruits and in the vegetables, water is in our body. Water we have to drink eight to 10 glasses of water. There is power in water. What is that power? It prevents dehydration. Dehydration is a condition when your body does not have enough water to work properly, to function. So we must have water in our body. It keeps us fresh. When we don't have water, we feel tired and weak. It keeps our eyes moist. Sometimes we'll have to put eye drops because we don't have enough moisture in our eyes. When we drink more water, it helps our eyes to stay moist. It keeps our skin healthy. Well, it improves our digestion. Without drinking water, we won't have good digestion. It helps our body to absorb nutrients. Just like fat helps our body, water also helps our body to absorb nutrients. It helps our body to distribute nutrients. So what did we say? Vitamin A we need for our eyes. So the water helps vitamin A to go to our eyes. And if we have a wound, we need vitamin K. That water will help the vitamin K to go to our wounds. Okay, so the body helps distribute the nutrients, the water helps distribute the nutrients. It also keeps our kidneys healthy. If we do not drink water, we, our kidneys will become sick. Kidney failure is a very serious issue and the way we can help prevent it is eating healthy and drinking lots of water. Help our bones and muscles to work. Just like that grape, when it shriveled up, when there was no liquid in the grape, it became all shriveled up. When we don't have water, our muscles become tight. Did you ever wake up in the night and your leg is twitching? It's probably because you went to bed without drinking water and your muscles became dehydrated. So they started to twitch. So we have to drink water, not just eight to 10 glasses of water, but at different times throughout the day. We can't drink it all at once. We have to drink water continuously throughout the day. Okay, so that is the power of water. What else did we find in our food? Fiber. Another word for fiber is roughage. Another word for fiber is roughage. Fiber is necessary. It's not necessarily a nutrient, but it's necessary in our body. Why? Because it helps to eliminate waste through our digestive system. We call it as its bulk. It pushes all the bad things out of our digestive system when we go to the bathroom. So without fiber, we will get stomach pain. We will get bloating, we'll feel uncomfortable, we will not feel healthy, we won't feel like eating. So we have to eat more fiber content. What did I tell you the fiber was? When you juice fruits and vegetables and you filter it into the cup, what is left in the filter is the fiber. That is necessary for our digestive system to remove waste from our body. Now, that is what we learned the other day. 
Now I want to talk to you about how do we prepare our food properly? What is the safety precautions we need for our food? If we do not take care of our food and make it clean, we will get sick. Just like we have to eat healthy so we don't get sick, we have to take care of our food so our food does not make us sick. So how do we take care of our food? We have to wash our hands for 20 seconds. How long? 20 seconds. We have to wash our hands with soap before touching food, before cooking food, before eating food, before handling food, we have to wash our hands. And we need to buy and use fresh food. We don't want to use old food. It should always be fresh. Why? Because the older the food is, the more chance there is for germs and bacteria to grow on it. So we always have to buy and use fresh food. Now, just like we have to wash our hands, we have to clean the food items before eating or cooking. So we wash our hands and we wash the fruits and vegetables. A good way to wash our fruits and vegetables is not with soap. We have to mix vinegar and water. Vinegar usually we have in our kitchen because your mothers will use it for cooking. Especially in Chinese food, right? You all like noodles? So vinegar is available in your house. So you should wash the vegetables in a concentration of vinegar and water. That way they will be clean. Before you eat it, any fruits you should wash. Before cooking your vegetables, you should wash. Okay? And you have to store raw and cooked food properly. You should never store raw meat and cooked meat together because they will cross contaminate. That means the germs for both of them will mix and that will make you sick. Some foods need to be kept outside in a dry area. Some foods need to be kept in a refrigerator. Okay, where the food is, we have to look. And we have to clean our kitchen regularly. That means we have to clean the mixies, we have to clean the countertops, we have to clean our vessels. We need to make sure the kitchen has no dust, that there are no roaches, no pests, no rats, no um, insects of any kind should be in the kitchen because they all carry de disease and germs through germs. Okay, so I want to talk to you about a few things. What is the need to wash our fruits and vegetables? The need is there are germs. See, fruits and vegetables are very nutritious for us. We get everything we need to live. Well, there is germs are a small thing that we cannot see with our eye. We can only see with a microscope. Those germs can live on our food. They will dissolve their nutrients also from those foods. But if we eat those foods without washing them, they can make us sick. They will cause us to get stomach aches. They will cause us to get vomitings. And they will also make us get diarrhea. Diarrhea means motions. It means going liquid stools where our bathroom becomes very watery. So these causes, you know, whenever we get sick, our teacher will ask, did you eat any outside food? Why? Because the cleanliness standard is less. They won't make sure there's no dust. When the cars are driving, dust will go on the food. Those things will carry germs. So we, germs cause us to get sick. It's not necessarily the food, it's the germs that have gotten on the food. So we have to make sure all of these safety precautions are maintained with our food before we cook it and eat it. Otherwise, we'll get stomach pain, we'll get vomiting, and we will get diarrhea. Let me show you what germs look like. One second. If you look here, there are different, germs have different shapes and different way of looking and every germ, when you look through a microscope, it'll look like this. Okay, these are germs that we cannot see with our eye. We can only see through a 
microscope. There are four types of germs. There are bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoan. Protozoan. Uh, okay, these four germs, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa, they will make us sick. They are the main germs. So what can we do? Many things that we buy are packaged food. Packaged food. So how do we know that these germs will not be in the packaged food? Well, when it comes to that, we will have the food safety analysis. Their only job is to check food for harmful substances. Usually they will verify the packing, packaged foods follows all the safety rules, so it does not contain the germs. So their job is to check our packaged foods. Food safety analysis. Okay, so then we have nutritionists. They will tell what we need to eat based upon our body. If we are diabetic, we need to eat one type of food. If we are children, we need to eat a different type of diet. If we are older, we need to have another special diet. So a nutritionist gives meal plans based upon our food needs. But did you know what? Animals also need special food. So then you have pet nutritionists. They study pet animal foods. They usually work for pet animal food companies or in a veterinary hospital. So when you look at this, we can see that there are some people who work, their only job is to make sure our food is safe. Okay, some people work for food safety for their daily job. Their job is to make sure our food is safe when we're buying packaged food. But for us to make sure our fresh food is safe, our fruits and vegetables, we have to wash our hands, we have to buy very fresh vegetables. We have to clean them in vinegar and water before we cook them. And we need to store raw foods and cooked foods separately. And we have to clean our kitchen regularly so that there does not have, contain any dust or germs. Okay, we already talked. If there is germs, we will get stomach aches, vomiting, and diarrhea. I want to ask you, where do germs grow? What area do germs grow the most? Do you have any idea? Guess. I did not tell you. I want you to tell me. Say it out loud. Very good. Germs grow in warm, warm areas. Germs grow in warm areas. That's why a lot of times they will keep food in the refrigerator because it'll make it last longer and it'll help the germs not to grow on the food. Because germs grow in a warm area, we like to keep meat and vegetables and fruits in the refrigerator or the freezer to pres preserve the food by not growing germs on them. Okay, so these are the things that I did not cover the last time we went over this. These things I want you to think about. Your safety is very important. Look at this. We are dealing with coronavirus night now. What are they asking us to do? Stay clean. We have to be clean. We need to wash our hands. We need to wash our fruits and vegetables. If you want an apple, make sure you wash your hands, make sure you wash your apple. Even if you're eating a banana where you peel it, still wash your hands. Let us be safe. Let us cook every, wash all of our vegetables in vinegar and water solution. Let us store our food in the refrigerator so the virus cannot be on there. And let us keep ourselves safe because germs grow in warm areas. Keep your food in the refrigerator. Now I want you to go through the lesson, read the whole lesson. A lot of the questions are your own answers. Go through and write those. But most importantly in this lesson, I want you to learn page eight and nine, all the vitamins, how they help you. I want you to read and study this. Then I want you to go to page 33 to the glossary. This is everything I've taught you in summarized form.
Okay, talks about carbohydrates, constipation, dehydration, diarrhea, fats, fiber, junk food, minerals, nutrients, protein, vitamins. It has their meanings here. This page is very important. I want you to go through and read page 33. Then after you've gone through the whole lesson, which I know that you know, I want you to do the question time. Everything in the two videos I've given you should be able to answer. The question time from page 34, 35, and 36. If you have any doubts, put your question in the WhatsApp group and I will answer you. Okay, so please do the question time. If you have any questions, you give your questions and we'll make another video answering the questions. Okay, children, enjoy your time. We'll come back with lesson two, two in a couple of days. Bye-bye.